is this brief mortal life? If not the pursuit of legacy. Someone stole Vagar. There is a debt. We play an ugly game. To be paid. This is the highest of treasons. If you are to be a strong queen, your subjects must fear you. I promise you in time, you and I together will prevail. Fire is such strange power. Everything that House Targaryen possesses is owed to it. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. This will be my full House of the Dragon Episode 7 trailer video. There's a whole bunch of Easter eggs here, so we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, I'm doing videos for all the episodes. Be sure to subscribe to get them. Careful from spoilers from the last episode, Episode 6, if you haven't seen it yet. But just starting at the beginning of the trailer footage, it seems like the main part of the episode covers Lena Valerian's funeral on Driftmark at High Tide. Like they're having the funeral ceremony here, burying her according to the customs of House Valerian. That's why they're giving her a sea burial, like they push the body in the casket into the sea. Technically, she died by cremation, like she asked Vagar to give her a sad Dracarys and burned her, but it didn't completely incinerate her body, like there is a body inside that casket. It seems like for the most part, the people who are here are the small council in the Targaryen and the Valerian families. I don't know if there's going to be a bunch of other great houses there, but it seems like it's just them, because you see most of them inside the High Tide throne room. Like that big main room that we got a teaser for in the previous episode. We'll just spend more time in there. The unfortunate easter egg that they're paying off with this is that Lena Valerian literally told Damon in the previous episode she wanted to go back to Driftmark. And she's getting her wish, just not quite what she expected. She also told him that she wanted to die a dragon rider's death, but she didn't know, she didn't realize that her death was going to be coming so swiftly. The voiceover is from her father, Corliss Valerian, talking about the pursuit of legacy. And that's just the whole idea of the battle lines being drawn and them really going at each other. Like, who is going to win the Iron Throne? Like, how hard are we going to fight each other for this? One of the other things you notice here in the funeral scene is that they're using the same young versions of the actors. So I don't know if they're going to age them up later in the timeline, later episodes, or during season two or something like that. Because between this and the actual Dance of the Dragons, there is a bit of a time jump. So like some of these younger actors would be much bigger, would have aged way up. Also, if you look in the behind the scenes for episode six, most of the Chirons where the younger versions of the actors are talking about playing their characters, like how excited they are to join the show, it says younger version of Aegon, younger version of Jakar. So it's like, oh, okay, maybe they'll have older versions in later episodes. I'm not totally sure which ring Rhaenys is dropping on the table here, but I think that's the idea that they're slowly drawing battle lines. Like which side will each great house take? Who will the Valerian side with? The ring could be hers, like it could be a Targaryen ring that she got from her family, or it could be Lena Valerian's ring. They show more scenes of Vagar, and obviously a big thing during this episode seems like somebody coming along to steal Vagar, and it seems like it's going to be Aemon Targaryen. He rides him in the books, you see him on the beach, you see him staring up in the dark. The whole thing they were teasing in episode 6 was him not being able to get a dragon, like him trying to claim Dreamfire and it going terribly and then the dragon dream that Helena Targaryen had, he'll have to shut one eye in order to claim a dragon, basically. Basically saying that he's going to have to lose an eye to get a dragon. But that he would get a dragon. So it does sound like Aemon winds up claiming Vagar during this episode. Because Bela and Reyna say, somebody stole Vagar, like they're trying to wake up Jacaris here in his bed. So it sounds like he's successful, but there's this huge brawl that you see happening inside Driftmark with like all the families, all the children. And you see in the background, like Aegon looks really sad, he's kind of downcast. Alicent gets really pissed off at Rhaenyra and they talk about high treason. It sounds like the children fight, like something happens between the children. There's a brawl and Aemon winds up losing his eye during that. And that's why Alicent is so pissed off at Rhaenyra. Like she blames Rhaenyra and her children for everything that happened. That's what she probably means when she says a debt must be paid. When you see Alicent on the Targaryen ship coming to Driftmark, there's a voiceover telling someone about becoming a strong leader and the people fearing them. That actually could be voiceover to Rhaenyra. Even though they've already said that the Fire and Blood book that this is based on was written by Maesters and it's meant to be a slightly inaccurate account of history, like the show is meant to be the truest version because you're actually seeing it play out in front of you. The Maesters actually refer to Rhaenyra as Magor with teats. Also in previous episodes, I believe it was Otto Hightower talking about Daemon potentially being another Magor. Like that was the big fear in the early episodes if he were to take the Iron Throne. Like we'd have another Magor on our hands. 
You see Rhaenyra wearing the black, like we're talking about the Dance of the Dragons, the sides are the greens and the blacks, but in the previous episode, Rhaenyra wasn't wearing black. They said they tried to make her look as close to the young version of Rhaenyra as possible to kind of ease the time transition, even though it was 10 years. So she was meant to look a little bit like the way that Millie Alcock looked, like their outfits were very similar, their hair was very similar. You also probably notice when they show some views of the back of her hair, her hairdo looks a little bit like Daenerys' hairdo, the special braids that they had in it. They also did that with a young version of Rhaenyra too. I think it was even in episode one when her father was having the realm swear fealty to her. They wanted her to look very much like Daenerys. This is just another scene of Vagar opening her mouth, getting ready to breathe fire. There's probably just a moment where Vagar almost seems like she's about to roast him completely. Sort of like a twist on his attempt to try and claim Dreamfire, like he almost got roasted that time, almost gets roasted this time, but this time he's successful. As Rhaenyra talks about the history of their family, the role of fire as in dragon fire in the success of the history of their family. How they were able to use dragons to conquer Westeros. This is another one of the scenes in Driftmark, like you can see the same monument in the background, the same staircase. This is just another scene of Vagar opening her eye in the middle of the night. This is that scene of Bela and Reyna coming to wake Shakira's, claiming that someone has stolen Vagar. Like I said, probably gonna be Aemon, just based on the foreshadowing with Helena Targaryen. He'll have to shut one eye. Then they actually cut a bunch of different scenes here with Laner Valerian and his lover Carl Corey. So it seems like they get into a sword fight, but there's a separate overhead scene in that hallway where the figures are kind of small, so you can't see perfectly. But the white hairdo that's strangling Carl Corey here, looking like they're killing them doesn't seem like it's meant to be Laner Valerian, like it looks like Daemon is actually killing him. And if you weren't sure what was going on in the hallway here, like all the monuments around Driftmark are meant to be from his nine voyages, the Sea Snake's nine voyages. These actual helmeted skulls seem like they belong to the Yogos Nai, which is like another race in Essos. You could spend all day talking about all the different Easter eggs from all of his different nine voyages and all the different places in the world. Most of the places that these are from are places that we haven't visited on the show yet. They might be saving some of this to pay off in other spin-off and other prequel series. It's not totally clear why Damon would be killing Carl Quarry, but what he might be doing is clearing the path to actually marry Rhaenyra, but she's married to Laner Valerian right now, so we talk about all the crazy stuff that Damon does to try and get the Iron Throne, and in the previous episode the whole theme was that he wasn't really sure what he was supposed to be doing with his life, like he was kind of languishing over in Pentos. It sounds like he's inspired by the death of his wife and what she told him to actually continue his pursuit of the Iron Throne. So what he might be doing is just getting rid of Rhaenyra's current husband, Laner Valerian, and his lover to clear a path so that he can marry her legally. This hooded figure in the bay with the white long hair might just be a version of Daemon. Like I said, when Allison is talking about this debt being paid inside High Tide, you see Aegon behind her seeming really sad about what's happened. It's probably after that fight, it probably has something to do with Aemon actually losing that eye. This seems like a different place where the children get into a fight and the eye is actually lost. When Rhaenyra is talking about this highest of treasons, that probably has something to do with the beef between them because of Aemon losing his eye. This is just Allison's father, Otto Hightower, becoming Hand of the King again, coming back into the story because he's been down in Old Town for the past 10 years since he got fired as Hand of the King. But the whole thing during episode 6, as they actually explained after the episode, is that Lara Strong was using Alicent's circumstances as an excuse to get rid of his family. That's why he did it. Like, he wanted to get rid of his family, and he was looking for an opportunity to do it, and he just used this when Alicent said, I wish my father were here. There was a lot of confusion about why he would do that after episode 6. Like, why would he kill his family? But the way they talk about it, they just make it sound like he wanted the title. Like, he wanted to become Lord of Harrenhal because he's way more powerful now. He has way more money. The whole thing with blackmailing Allison too, I'm sure you'll reward me when the time comes, I believe is meant to be when he thinks that Aegon II eventually takes the Iron Throne. Like, he's backing the Greens, assuming that they'll win, and trying to put himself in a really favorable position. So he probably wants Allison to put him on her small council. Like, we'll call them the Green Council, because this other council of Rhaenyra's is called the Black Council. It's sort of like the different sides. We'll talk about that in later episodes, too. Then we get the big scene of Alicent attacking Rhaenyra with the Valyrian dagger. You notice that she just pulls it right off of her husband Viserys, and because his illness has left him so enfeebled, he can't stop her from yoinking the dagger off of him. And it looks like she means to attack Rhaenyra, but I don't think that she's trying to kill her. What probably winds up happening, because you see Rhaenyra bleeding later and saying, ah, you finally shown them who you really are, basically, like trying to out her as being this terrible person in front of everybody. I think the idea is that she was just trying to scare her and it's like an accident, like she didn't actually mean to stab her with the Valyrian dagger and just winds up cutting her a little bit. And it's one of those situations where things just go a little too far, like Aemon losing his eye is probably a situation like that, like the children fight and he probably accidentally loses his eye and then Rhaenyra responds in kind and things escalate to the Dance of the Dragons. 
because later you get the voiceover from Allison's father saying, we're playing a dangerous game. Are you sure you have the grit to try and win it? Like, are you sure you're ready to play this to the logical end? Because a lot of people are probably going to die. And she seems pretty crestfallen. So I think that she's probably upset about what happened. The same is what happened with Laris at the end of last week's episode. She was kind of horrified when she found out what he'd actually done. Like, I didn't tell you to kill them. Why would you do that? The whole reason is that he was playing her like he's trying to blackmail her. So what they're trying to show you is the circumstances that led to the Dance of the Dragons. So like neither one of them, Allison or Rhaenyra, like really wanted to go at each other. But you can see how the circumstances around them and the people around them too are influencing that decision. Like over on Rhaenyra's side, you also have Daemon being this force of chaos killing all these people. So the whole idea is that both of these different sides, the Blacks and the Greens, wind up doing terrible, terrible things. But a lot of it winds up being kind of on accident. I think one of the other big hanging plot threads is what's going to happen to Viserys because there's other footage of him from the previous trailers from forward in the timeline. So if we think of him as like the Ned Stark of the season, like the Sean Bean of the season, when is he going to die? Right now I'm assuming that he probably winds up passing away in episode 9 because they can't really start the actual Dance of the Dragons, like the actual conflict, until he actually passes away. But it could always be before that, like we have episode 8, who knows what happens in that. So post all your predictions in the comments below. There's a bunch of stuff coming up this week, a couple bonus videos and a couple other big episodes from the other series that I'm covering. They also released a teaser video for The Last of Us series. That's going to premiere next year. I'll probably do episode videos for that as well. But obviously that's totally different from House of the Dragon, Game of Thrones stuff. My full episode 7 video will post next week after they release it. Everyone click here for my full episode 6 video and click here for all my other House of the Dragon videos. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.